Bro, you ask, want to ask a question? Do you know that the Messiah, these things come before the second falling or after it? The what? The, what's the thing called in the... You mean the second coming? The fall of the temple. Yeah. Okay, right. so wait, I'm, I'm dealing with his question. So, there's a passage in scripture that, if read wrongly, could suggest that Christ is returning before the second temple. It's talking about when Christ talks about the end of the age and his, second, and his return. And some people read that in a way that tries to suggest that Christ is coming before the destruction of the temple. All Christians reject that view. The re the, what Christ is talking about when he talks about the, the, that he will come again in glory, he's talking about a prophecy in Daniel 7, where it says, as Daniel said, and I continue to look into the night watches, and behold, one like the Son of Man was presented before the Ancient of Days and seated at his right hand. Christ, after the resurrection, which is before the destruction of the temple, ascends and is glorified and is seated at the right hand of the Father. That is the coming again in glory that Jesus is talking about. However, separately to that, the New Testament talks about the parousia of the Lord, which is the second coming of the Lord, where Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead at the day of resurrection. That is a second coming. It's talking about two different things, and sometimes Christians confuse them. They're talking about two separate things. I hope that clears up the question for you. And you're gone, sir. So you believe in Trinity? You believe in Trinity? Before, before I answer your question, are you sure you want to make that your question? Because you're only getting one question. Yeah, I, yeah, about, All right. About Trinity. So the question is, do I believe in Trinity? The answer is yes. Next question. Yeah. No. Next question. No. You, I, Next question. You'll have to wait. I have to prove it. You are, I gave you a chance, sir. I really did. Next question. I really did give you a chance. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. Let that be a lesson to you all. Don't ask obvious questions. Next question. Why are the Jews rejecting Jesus? So the question is, why do the Jews reject Jesus? The answer is, not all Jews reject Jesus. The church was founded as a Jewish movement, and there are Jews that accept Jesus all the time. The ones that reject Jesus are the ones that believe in the lies of anti-Christian missionaries who try to steer the Jewish people away from the correct interpretation of the Old Testament that points to Jesus. Let's be clear, the whole of the New Testament is a Jewish text written by Jews, primarily to Jews, that points to Jesus as being the Messiah. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. He say believe on the one who sent me. If he's God, why he's talking about sender? So, ladies and gentlemen, who is that sender? why does Jesus call us to believe in the Father? Why? Because the Father is God. Correct. Sir. We Christians don't believe that the Father and the Son are the same person. We don't. The Father yeah. sent the Son. Yeah. That makes no statement about whether the Son is divine. Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. The Quran says that Allah is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. So let me ask the Muslims, who's the first and the last? Jesus or Allah? Why is Allah stealing the divine titles of Jesus? Any other questions? Do you want to debate? Do you want to debate? Then let someone else ask a question. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? 
So the question is, why did Muhammad hijack the Bible? The truth is, there's no evidence that Muhammad hijacked the Bible. Muhammad believed in the Torah and he believed in the Injil, but he didn't understand either book. He believed that the Injil and the Torah taught what he taught and that both of these books pointed to him. But the truth is that even though the Quran never accuses the Injil or the Torah of being changed, if it states that both are the word of God and that Jews and Christians must stand upon the Torah and the Injil, but the reality is if the Torah and the Injil are true, as the Quran says they are, then Muhammad is a false prophet because the Torah and the Injil show that Muhammad cannot be a prophet of God. But it is wrong to say that Muhammad hijacked the Bible and the Injil because he never read the Bible and the Injil to hijack them. The Bible was written 600 years after Jesus. The New Testament was written after 500 or 600 What's your question? My question, who wrote the Bible, you know, he translated wrongly. Right. Absolutely wrongly. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. Let's be clear. The uncle doesn't know what he's talking about. The idea that the Bible was written 600 years after Jesus is not true of the Bible, but it is true of the Quran. The New Testament, and this isn't my opinion, this is the opinion of all biblical scholars, including biblical scholars that don't believe in the Bible, like Dr. Barterman, like Dr. Bruce Metzger, like Dr. Daniel Wallace, like Dr. James White, like Dr. Mike Lacona, like, uh, uh, I can't think of another one. Who teach, who teach, wait, who teach, who teach, who teach that all of the Bible was written before 90 AD. But the Quran, yeah. the Quran yeah. was written 600 years after Jesus. So which one is going to be a more reliable source about Jesus? The one that came 600 years later or the one that was written in the lifetime of the people that knew Jesus himself? Let someone else have a chance to ask a question. Does anyone else want to ask a question? Well, who was it? Rev, sorry, what's the question? Repeat. What's the question, sir? Right, okay, you've made a statement. I'm going to reply. Your options are either listen to the reply or come and debate. What would you like to do? Right. So I'm going to reply. I'm going to reply. No, don't be rude to him. Thank you. So the statement was, if the Bible had not been changed, then it would be the same. But that's not the case. Ladies and gentlemen, that is just an assertion. Where is the evidence that the Bible has been changed? Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear about something. The premise of the question, he doesn't want to listen to the answer. The premise of the question is false. Because the premise of the question is that the Bible has been corrupted, but the Christians have to believe in word for word, uh, word for word perfection and preservation. That is not a Christian belief. We believe that the message of Scripture is what must be preserved, and I can demonstrate that the message of Scripture 
has been preserved. However, the Muslim brother isn't listening because he wanted to make his spiel and then not listen to the reply. But, ladies and gentlemen, no you weren't, you were talking. Stop lying, you were talking. Stop lying, you were talking. There he goes. But, ladies and gentlemen, look, but, ladies and gentlemen, the Quran, Muslims believe, must be preserved word for word. And we can demonstrate that there are different Qurans with different words and they don't teach the same thing. So in other words, his argument collapses the Quran and not the Bible. Would you like to debate? No, he's walking off. Bye. Next question, go on. Science, logic science, and the Bible, you know, especially uh, the Bible, the New Testament, you know, the New Testament. Science and the New Testament, you know, prove that a lot of uh, uh, wrong things or explanation in the New Bible, the science is against the New Bible, you know. One plus one is two, you know, that's a science. But in the Muslim, they are more logical than the New Bible. Right, so the claim is, the claim is, ladies and gentlemen, the claim is that science contradicts the Bible. Yeah, that's what I mean. So let me just give you some scientific facts that contradict the Quran. The Quran states that the sun settles in a puddle of mud. The Quran states that a man can't have two hearts in one body, but Siamese twins demonstrate that you can have two hearts in one body. The Quran states that the moon cannot overtake the sun as it passes over the sky, but a solar eclipse demonstrates that the moon does overtake the sun as it passes over the sky. It took me literally two minutes to demonstrate that the science contradicts the Quran, ladies and gentlemen. Two minutes. Here's some more. Here's some more. The Quran states that sperm is created between the rib cage and the spine. Science demonstrates that it's your testicles that demonstrate where sperm is created. The Quran says that as you develop inside your mother's womb, bones develop before flesh. But the reality is that bones and flesh grow together at the same time. The Quran states, let me give you another example. Can I think of another example off the top of my head? Sorry? All right, so I've demonstrated that science contradicts the Quran. Now, ladies and gentlemen, anyone who wants to say that the Bible contradicts science has to demonstrate to me that the Bible was trying to make a scientific statement in the first place. And it wasn't, and it isn't, it's making theological statements. Let someone else ask a question. Let someone else ask a question. Anyone else who wants to ask a question? Uh, me. No, no. So the other text that I mentioned, the Quran refers to the Bible in three words. Torah, Zabor and Injil. These are references to the Torah of the Jews, the Psalms of David and the New Testament or the Gospels specifically. However, lady, I'm answering his question, don't be rude, bro. However, ladies and gentlemen, when it suits Muslims, they ignore those definitions. Why? 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 Because when it suits them, they quote from Isaiah. Okay. to prove that Muhammad is in the Torah, ah. but
But Isaiah is not a book of the Torah. Okay. When it suits them, yeah. they quote Paul's epistles. But Paul's epistles are not the Gospels. No, they're not. And when it suits them, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. when it suits them, they say that these words don't refer to the Torah and the Injil. Okay. In other words, it's talking to a non-existent text. Ah, okay. But then when it suits them, yeah. they quote those texts to prove the Quran. So in other words, yeah. they make ad hoc arguments with no consistency of thought. Maybe Next question. Go on. Jesus, he oh, say, a messenger is coming after me. So who is that messenger? They come too many messenger. No one is succeeding except Muhammad. That's why he's growing and oh, the dominate the world. So no? shall I reply? Yeah. Tell me. Right. China. Shall I reply? Muslim. Okay, shall I reply? Yeah, Muslim, Europe, shall I reply? Right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The uncle misquotes the Bible. It does not say in John 16 that another messenger is coming after me. The Greek is, and I will quote it for you, that another paraclete, another paracleton is coming after me. The word paracleton yeah. does not translate to messenger. It translates to another advocate or you can translate it as another helper. Right. And who is he talking about in that passage in John 16? The one is identified in John 14 and 15 and 16. Who is, he? Who is the Holy, Holy Spirit? Spirit? the Agios Panuma. Yeah. So not only doesn't it say messenger, but the advocate and helper is actually given a name, the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Muslims Spirit? don't believe that the Holy Spirit is Muhammad. Ah. Muslims believe that the Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel. But yet when it suits them, okay. they want to apply that passage to Muhammad showing again an inconsistency of thought in their application of the text. The Holy Spirit is the third and divine person of the Trinity who in the book of Acts is described in black and white as God. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. In the Bible, they say God. In the Bible. So I want to ask you... <laughs> I want to ask you, what happens to non-Christians in the afterlife? Where do they go? Are they destined for hell? Or, no. or do they have a chance of uh, entering heaven? Right. So the question is, yeah. as a Christian, what do I believe happens to those on Judgment Day who have rejected the Christ? Yeah. What about? Christ says that the judgment, that they will be divided into two, those on his left, and those on his right, and those on his right who have not accepted him or his teachings will be cast into outer darkness, that they will perish in burning fire. And as a Christian, I believe the same. Those who reject the Messiah of God, those who reject the free gift of the Father in his Son, for their redemption will answer for their sins and their sins will mean that they will burn in the lake of eternal fire at judgment for they have rejected God and his mercy in Jesus Christ. Sorry. You, you might as well come and debate, bro. <laughs> at this point, you might as well just come and debate. You, you translate, you translate you. about Holy Spirit. Yes. You know. In the Christianity, the Holy Spirit is in the Bible. They say when God He created a human, you know, He created a human at His image, man and female, male and female. Correct. So God, His go, His personality, spiritual personality, personality, female as a as a as a woman, 
and male as a man. What's your question, so, sir? The, the, great, the, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, but is the female Spirit of God. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, God. ladies and gentlemen. Let me reply. He has accepted Christian doctrine. Well done. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Yeah. Yes. That is exactly what we Christians believe. That is exactly what the Bible teaches. But he touched randomly upon this idea that man is made in the image of God, male and female. Spiritual. And we agree with this. We believe this. Let me give you some reasons why. The Holy Spirit, Panuma, the Holy Spirit, the Agios Panuma, is a feminine form. It is a feminine form. Christ himself uses feminine imagery. He says, oh, how I have longed to gather you under my wings like a hen gathers her chicks. Why? Because man and woman together, both male energy and female energy embody the energy of God, our creator. With what dignity and honor God has established both male and female. Which is why in the Christian faith, males and females are equals, unlike in Islam. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Sorry? Why as Christians should we reject Muhammad? Muhammad should be rejected by Christians because he did not come in the name of the God of Israel. He did not come in the name of Yahweh. He spoke in the name of a false God. He is not a descendant of Jacob, which means that he has no claim to prophethood, which incidentally even the Quran states that prophethood was given to Israel and Muhammad contradicts Jesus in Jesus' teachings about the Father, about the Holy Spirit and about Jesus himself. He denies the crucifixion, he denies the resurrection, he denies the Trinity and Paul, the apostle of the church, guided by the Holy Spirit, wrote in Galatians chapter 1 that if an apostle or an angel of light comes and preaches a gospel other than this, let him be accursed. And so Muhammad is accursed because he does not teach the same gospel as that of the church. That's why we should reject Muhammad. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Let someone else have a chance. Any other questions to ask a question? When it comes to the injury with the Muslims... I'm sorry? When it comes to the gospel, I mean the injury with the Muslim, Muslims, they claim. When you, ask, when you ask them about proof, why they cannot give any proof of that? About what? The they gospel? Say, yeah, the gospel. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Muslims will tell you that the gospel has been changed. Right. Show me the original then. If you're going to claim that something has been changed from the original, it is incumbent upon you to produce the original to demonstrate that it has been changed. Muslims cannot produce the original and so they cannot validate their claim that it has been changed from the original. However, the entire Muslim argument is based upon a logic that Christians don't hold. Christians don't believe or require word-for-word word preservation of the text. The gospel was a message before it was a book. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that message existed in a verbal form before it was a written form, ladies and gentlemen. And if that message, and if that message was preserved, if the written form preserves the oral form 
as we can demonstrate that it does, then the gospel has been preserved, ladies and gentlemen. No, you interrupted, so now you have to wait. Well, yeah, go on. One hour or 20 minutes? According to the Quran, what was the purpose of Jesus? Sorry? According to the Quran, what was the purpose of Jesus? Now, I want to be clear, ladies and gentlemen. I don't really care what the Quran says about Jesus. And I much more talk about what G the Bible says about Jesus. However, to answer the question, even though it is false, even though it is not true, even though I don't believe it, the Quran teaches that, Maha that Jesus was nothing but a prophet, that he taught the same beliefs as Muhammad in the oneness of God, and that he was a Muslim who submitted to Allah and taught the submission to the one God, having changed the Sharia by bringing new revelation that made some things halal that were previously haram and some things haram that were previously halal. And that on the day of judgment, Jesus will condemn those who worship three gods and include Jesus and Mary as gods beside Allah. Brother, do me a favor. If you want to learn about the Quran, go and speak to a Muslim. No, 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 no. It, Next question. Go on. Bob, why, Him and then you. Why John the Baptist, he rejects Jesus. And I prove it in the Bible. John the Baptist, he rejects Jesus. He sent his messenger to Jesus. He should be with Jesus. Now he's got his own messenger. And he asked Jesus, What's your, are right, you let me the answer. Messiah or we wait for another right. one? John the Baptist yeah, let me ask them. Jesus, right, let me ask that question. Jesus, he say about Thank you, Baptist, I get the point. He'll be the right. one in Do you hell. want to debate? Right. In answer to the brother's question, in answer to the brother's question, yeah. if I ask you your identity, is that the same as me rejecting you? No. No. You see, the uncle doesn't think about his questions. Asking someone their identity is not a rejection of them. Let me demonstrate this with a real world example. Every time you pass through customs, you are asked to prove your identity. That is not the same as rejecting you. The moment you prove your identity, you get to pass through the border. So the brother has made a category mistake. He is confused asking someone their identity with rejecting someone's identity. And that is not the same. John asks the question, who are you? He doesn't reject Jesus before or after. That is just a lie. Go on, sir, your question. What attributes, how would you describe God, your Christian God? What attributes would you assign to him? Right. So the question is, what attributes would I assign to God? I can't give a, 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 a full list because the list isn't even in my, the full list isn't even in my mind. Level, just general, a couple of the... One question at a time. If you want to debate, come and step in. Do you want to debate? No, no, no. Wait, let's be clear on terms. You've asked a question. I'm going to give an answer. If you try to debate, you come in. Otherwise, you let someone else ask a question. Which do you want to do? You will wait each time then for someone else to ask a question in between. Right. Or you come in and debate. Come in and debate. Come in and debate. Come and stand here and debate. Right. I'm, right. Okay. okay.